Alrighty, what's up everybody? It is I, your travel god of extreme, Peter Joseph here for a Sunday afternoon video. Right here on the official Peter Joseph YouTube Wrestling Channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Joseph. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like the video. Hit that subscribe button down there. You know where it is. In the description box below, otherwise known as my pants. So subscribe to this channel and my other channels down there in the description box. Show your love and support. Leave a comment on the video or any one of my past videos or in the future, Conan. Any one of my videos, but don't leave stupid comments. You're going to get blocked. You don't like that? Then go cry to your mama, little baby bitch. That's it. That's, 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 that's that. You can't be respectful, then you don't need to be on my channel. You can go to your, your fucking dead channel and nobody will care about it. But I digress on that. But for the actual real people that are actually real, not fake as fuck bitches, that want to, uh, they want to subscribe, they want to comment about the topic at hand, or just to say hi, then you can do that. But others who are going to be disrespectful, you're going to get sent to the shadow realm where Satan will eat your soul. And that's that. And also follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Same thing applies there. And also share the video all over the internet. Most importantly, tap and slap that bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss the next video because you miss anything. You're pretty much SOL, and you better know what that means. If you don't know, look it up. And if you're brand new here, as we are on this channel, we are, we are inching closer and closer to 700 subscribers. But if you're brand new here for the very first time and you're thinking about subscribing, please do hit that like button and shove that thumb way up the wahoo to everybody else who doesn't like it. Subscribe to the channel and my other channels as well. And uh, when you do subscribe, as we always say in the business, welcome to the party, pal. We hope you enjoy the ride. Sit back. Like I said, sit back, relax, put your feet up, grab a cold one, and enjoy the show. If you like it, great. You don't. There's the door. Don't let it hit your stupid ass on the way out, and you can play with yourself on your dead channel. And that's uh, pretty much it. As we move on. So, if you like it, great. You know, go fuck yourself. And that's it. Alright, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. A beautiful, not too cold here in the Northeast. 55 degrees right now, just about 3 o'clock. So... Pretty nice, going to get a little bit warmer over the next couple days, but then down the drain as we hit the uh, the end of the second week of, of December. We are actually officially 17 days away until Christmas and level 48, and uh, that's going to be pretty damn exciting in two weeks. So we got all that coming away, and also it is, we are just under, just about to hit three weeks away from the end of the year. So, counting down those days to the new year, 2025. So, the holiday season is upon us. I hope you're getting your Christmas shopping done now. Not, well, you could do it this week. It's coming week, coming weekend. But the week after this week, oh boy. You might be on some long as fuck lines at the retail stores. And me, and you know, same thing. Well, not the same thing, but... If you're getting it online, I just start getting it now and have it shipped in the next by by, by the end of this week. Because if you don't get it, if you don't get it shipped by the, by next Sunday, you might have problems getting your Christmas gifts to your loved ones by Christmas. So, but it is what it is, and that's that. Also, we got week 14 in the NFL in the league where they play who pay. We got that. The Jets are uh, actually winning a game. Yay! But we remember what happened last week. They were when they were beating the Sea Cocks. Second half came in. Ugh. But looks like they're doing that today. They're leading twenty to fifteen in the third quarter. About ten minutes left in the game. Giants. What else is there? They're losing <laughs> to the Saints at home. So they're about to go. They may, may if they uh, well. See what happens with them. They might go to 2-11. And, and Jacksonville's 2-10. So they're fighting for the number one number one pick. 
right now. So, just trying to spoil some playoff hopes for certain teams, like like the Miami Dolphins, but we'll see. Uh, as far as my San Francisco 49ers, well, they're back home, but they're playing at 425, about an hour and a half from now, at home in Santa Clara at Levi, to face the Bears. See how that goes. Pretty much the Niners have to win out and hope <laughs> to, get to, to get to the NFC West title. They have to have Arizona, Seattle, and pretty much the Rams to kind of like, Ugh! but Niners got to do their part. And they got a hard schedule coming up. They got the Bears today. They got that. They, they're at home against Arizona. Big division game there on Thursday Night Football. And then after that, they're going to go to Miami for week uh, 16, right before, right before Christmas. And then right before the new year, they got a big game. I know they're probably going to lose that. They're going to get destroyed that game. Because really, that might be a big game for the Lions, depending on the number one and number two seed and home field. So that game on December the 29th in Santa Clara. Might be a big game for the Lions, and maybe be a big game for the Niners. That's week 17, that's week 17, at home against the Lions, and then they finish off the year in SoFi, or Levi South 2, against the Rams, which could be huge. But we'll see. But the Bills are facing the Rams today in SoFi. I hope the Bills win. Arizona and the Seacocks are playing uh, later today, I think that game is in Arizona, I think. I'm not sure, but if I was a Niner fan, I'd be rooting for those Arizona Cardinals right now and hope, hope and, and um, do your job and beat the Bears so you still be one game out of the division. And then next uh, Thursday night is a huge night. Beat Arizona, you'll be in pretty much first place, and you control your destiny with... Two games left. Uh, three games left. Got to beat Miami. Then, then it's a little dicey with the Lions at home. And then end of the year against the Rams in L.A. Mm. So there's some, some hope, Niner fans. Some hope. But we'll see what happens today. Win today. Great. Build on that Thursday. Mop the floor with Arizona. We should have beat early in the season. But yeah. Uh, Right in the fourth quarter, like they always do. So, I hope, I hope by the end of next week, by this time next weekend, we'll be talking about the Niners, instead of being five and six, uh, five and, uh, five and, uh, five and seven, they'll be at 500, seven and seven, and maybe at the top of the division. And who knows, nine and eight can win the division, and probably the fourth seed, but at least you get a home game. Instead of, Trying to get in by that wild card. I don't think they're going to make that wild card. There's too many teams way in, ahead in front of them. Like the Pack Queers, the Fight Queers, the Commanders. They got other teams ahead of them, like the Rams and the Seacocks, Arizona. You got to worry about that. Maybe Tampa Bay. Maybe the Saints. Maybe Atlanta. Because that NFC South's just stacked between Atlanta and Tampa Bay right now. Ugh. It's playoff time. It's getting there. We're getting it's, as we all say. We used well, I used to say in the business, it's squeaky bum time, which means sitting on your ass, your hands on your ass, and hope and pray. Well, we got that. All right, Giants down seven to three, eight eight forty three left in in the game. Giants are driving, but it's third and two, and Drew Locke is starting. Ugh. Yeah, but the Niners are garbage. The Niners, sorry. What am I talking about? The Giants are garbage. They're about to pump the ball again. Eh, what else is new? I'm surprised this game is actually not a blowout. The Saints are pretty damn good. They should be wiping the floor right now with the Giants. Giants only got three stinking points. The last few games, they've gotten like three points. It's just sad. Sad. But we'll see what happens with that. And we're still on the one Soto watch this weekend. And we got the winter meetings tomorrow. I, forgot, I don't even know what they are, but Juan Soto, he's going to get some. 
major money. And right now, uh, the bets went up to 730. They could possibly go up to 760. And if C.B. Cohen had his way, he could go up to 800 million dollars, which will trump Otani's money by a, by a few few million dollars. But, you know, I got the Yankees, you know, may go up. I hope not. Uh, the Red Sox, Toronto, a couple other teams, maybe the Dodgers. I don't really want him on the Dodgers. And I'll tell you, just forget, like, forget it. Throw in the towel, you know. But, you know, hopefully the Mets can get, can, uh, get Soto. If not, then plan B, I would think, is probably get, maybe get Bregman, maybe get Santander from, like, believe he plays on the uh, Orioles. Get Bregman from Houston. We signed Pete Alonso. And maybe get a, uh, get Santander to be in the, in the starting rotation. Because I hate Clay Holmes as a starter. I don't know why they're saying he's going to be a starter. A number two starter. He's better off as a setup man than Diaz. Just saying. Just saying. We'll be moving on. Alright. Ladies and gentlemen, on this beautiful Sunday, 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 the 78th, 2024, thank you all for watching right here on the Peter Joseph channel, and I'm Peter Joseph, a great American, and you're not. I'm a content creator, talk about the wonderful world of professional wrestling, and ever anything else I want to talk about. You like it? Great. You don't? Go fuck yourself. That's that. Alright, so on this football Sunday, week 14 in the NFL League, where they play for pay, and in general, it is time! For your late and out of date NXT Deadline review. Alright, so Deadline is in the books. The final pay per view of the year for NXT. And then we're gonna roll on. On Tuesday, we start the road to New Year's Eve. January the 7th on the CW11 from Los Angeles, California. So that should be some good stuff. So we got the men's and women's number one contender for the respective uh, world titles. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Still have tag team champions. And uh, we have a lot more on the show. So let's get into it. Let's not waste any time. All right. So deadline emanated from the Minnesota Armory. Nice little place there. Very nice. I'd like to see more pay-per-views there, or NXT uh, live, well, not so much live events, maybe NXT on the CW11, I'd love to see that. It's a great place, but it's in Minneapolis, Minnesota, so there you go. Tiffy Tiff's hometown, still, and we saw her t uh, that last night. Hmm, gotta love that. Anyway, alright, so we had, as always, on commentary, the man with the creepy jacket and a lot of candy, and he loves that, those Starburst Skittles. Candy, he loves candy. He's fun at parties, he's fun on Halloween. The creepy man himself, Vic Joseph, and a man who smokes more fucking weed than you do. The Kool-Aid man himself, the six-time World Heavyweight Champion, two-time Hall of Famer, Booker T, sucker! Oh yeah, man! Oh yeah! Okay, calm down. Alright, so, so we got that. Alright! So, great pay-per-view, not, well, not great, great pay-per-view, but pretty damn decent pay-per-view to end the year for NXT. So, we open up with a opening video to talk about how it's a special time of year. You know, it's Christmas! Christmas! It's Christmas! Nani Appleton! It's Christmas! Nani Appleton goes on Nani! We do not dance so joy! La, la, la. Okay, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but if you watch Perfect Strangers, you know how to do it. And if you don't know how to do it, <laughs> go look it up on YouTube. But I digress. All right, so special time of year. We look at the card, and uh, pretty much is uh, reflecting the NXT World Title between Dick Whitty, Shimon. About to do some. We're gonna somebody's gonna get a tricky woman. Whoop whoop. You know. And then maybe they call him a big headed butch. No, because you're a butch, a big headed butch. All you people that don't like me, you're a bunch of butches. Freak as fuck, tough guys. But I digress. Anyway, moving on with that. So that's ma the main main part of the video, and then we also get a uh, preview of the men's and women's Iron Survivor Challenge matches coming up. So we uh, 
we get all that. Alright, so we get a look at the arena, which looks pretty damn good. Uh, the front looks like a normal arena, but when you go inside, it kind of looks like a, uh, an armory, basically. Like a, like a, uh, I can't, I can't explain it. It's like when I, it's like if you go to an indie show, it's like at, a, at an armory. Not so much the ECW arena type kind of place, but, you know, it's a little bit like that, but bigger. <laughs> you know what I mean? But very good place. Very nice place. Very nice. All right, so we start off with the Men's Iron Survivor Challenge. Now, for the Iron Survivor, for men and the women, here's the rules for those people who don't know what the rules are. Two wrestlers start, and every five minutes, another competitor joins the fray. And you can win by pinfall, submission, or DQ. It earns you a point, or a pinfall. And then if you lose the fall, you go in the penalty box for 90 seconds. So, technically, it's kind of like King of the Mountain, without the ladder and the title, of course. And most falls in 25 minutes wins you an NXT men's or women's world title shot at New Year's Evil. All right, so we get that. All right, so we find out that DJ Nightwolf, Eddie Dorp, got injured by an unknown assailant. Still don't know who it possibly be is, but I think we found out last night. So he's out of the Men's Iron Survivor Challenge, and then Ava Rain says, Well, I got a suitable replacement. And boy, was it a suitable replacement. Oh, it was great. But we started with the men's match. We had the young OG, Mr. Bouncy himself. He's Tigger. Because Tigger's like the bounce, Bouncy Tiggers. That's what Tiggers do best. Anyway, Javon Evans comes out at number one. Wesley, number two. And then Ben Frazier at number three. Old Ego, Ethan Page, at number four. And the mystery man is... I thought it was going to be Lexus King. I really thought it was going to be Lexus King, but nope. It was the big man. The former longest reigning North American champion in NXT history. The big man from Wakanda. Wakanda forever. It's Oba. Who? Femi. So Oba comes out. Humongous pop. That was great. But anyway... Uh, first five minutes, uh, Wesley won with five, five seconds left in the first five minutes. So he gets the first pin pretty, you know, from there. And then Ben Frazier gets the pin in 1038 after he came out. So like 30 seconds, 38 seconds after he came out, he got the pin after Ethan Page came out at number four. So, uh, yeah, quick small package to Ethan at 10.38 of the official time of the match. And then, pretty much about two minutes later, Ethan Page scored a pin on Ben Frazier. And, uh, Ben Frazier's nose got busted wide open. Blood just going everywhere almost. But, so, so while he was in the penalty box, the, the trainer was in the penalty box. <laughs> He's sticking up his nose, like, arr, 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 cleaning his nose. Look at all that. Uh, it looks like the Saints are going to be, uh, they're in uh, the red zone right now, so he probably could go up 14-3 to three or 10-3, to three, depending on what the Giants do. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Giants are done, man. But we get that. Alright, so Javon hits that wicked wannabe Gilmore cutter of his on the apron. Ow! So then the vi all, all the villains, all the, well, Ethan Page and uh, Wesley, pretty much, well, and some a little bit Ben Frazier, kind of ganged up on Javon, hit, hit a suicide dive doomsday device on the floor. That was sick. Crazy as shit, as the great Jay Briscoe would say. And then Oba comes out, and I'm like, oh, here we go. Oba's gonna kill everybody. Oba gets the gets his pin. Right, it's like a minute after he came out. So it's tied at one, except for Javon Evans, who needs to get a pin quickly. 
but he does get the pin. Um, pretty much two minutes later at 18:39, so it's tied at one. And then with about under five minutes left, Ethan Page scores another pin to get his second win. So it's crunch time. Uh, but after Ethan Page scores the pin, uh, Booker T insists that no one else is going to get a fall. But then, and then Javon Evans like, well, I'm going to one-up that one. So he rolls up Ethan Page and puts him in a penalty box with about three, three minutes and change left. So he's up two. So it's probably going to be between Javon Evans and Ethan Page to see who might win this goddamn thing. And then, uh, and then Oba comes in, and, uh, Oba comes in and hits, um, I think he hit a double, uh, we had one pin, uh, one pin, but I think he pinned, I forgot who he pinned, I think he pinned, I know Ben Frazier, not a Ben Frazier, I think it was Javon, and, and, um, I think it was Ben Frazier or Wesley. So he picks up two pins in the same amount of time to get three, three pinfalls. And then right near the end, Ben Frazier hits a top rope Gilmore cutter on Oba. But he tries to go for, go for the pin. Go for the pin to maybe... Well, it didn't really matter because he, he got, the, got the Gilmore cutter. But time ran out and Oba wins the match. Three falls to two on Ethan Page and Javon Evans. So, Oba Femi, who, Wakanda forever. He will take on the winner of Trick Wide, Trick Williams, and Rich Holland for the NXT title at no, at, at no, at, <laughs> at New Year's Evil. So, we got that. So, great match. 4.25 out of 5 stars. And that's it. So, Oba gets the win. We didn't know where he was, but I guess we now know who... Took out DJ Nightwolf. Or was it Oba? Hmm. I'm interested. So we'll see what happens with that. Alright, then we get a video for Alexis Kang. He walks around in the cold. I guess he's in Minnesota or Cincinnati. Both of them are cold this weekend anyway. He walks around. He's kind of pissed. He's not on the show. He's like, I give in my all. Try to be myself. Not like my dad. You know, the loose cannon, Brian Pillman Sr., and while it looks like all hope is lost, nothing feels better than satisfaction. Okay. All right, so we got that. All right, match number two, NXT Underground match. Mm. We have Lola Faisese. Oh, she was looking fine. And another fine piece of ace. And that's Jada Parker. All right, so NXT Underground, no ropes. Kind of feels like blood sport. No ropes. Uh, people around the ring is like basically people that are not on the show. People from NXT level up basically and maybe some WWE ID people. But anyway, object of the Mac is to win by knockout, submission, or TKO. And this is Lola Vice's match basically. She's won two in a row. He beat Shayna Baszler a few uh, earlier this year. He beat Natalia as well. So this is number three. See, she can, she can make the hat trick. But this was brutal. Brutal. Brutal match between both of these ladies. And hopefully this ends the feud. Uh, Lola tried for a spinning back fist and hit the ring post. Ow! And he, uh, after the match, she's holding her wrist, and she's taking. And then, if you if you follow her on Twitter, she has her ice on her wrist. She might have a broken fucking hand, a broken wrist. Woo! That had her. And then Jada hits the hypnotic on Lola on, on her bad hand, and then Jada knocks her down with some right hands to face, and then she pulls out. Uh, Lola Vice's black belt, because she's a black belt in, uh, karate or some type of, uh, jiu-jitsu, maybe. Or Mai Tai. Uh, uses it to pull Lola hard into the ring post. Damn! Yeesh. But anyway, 
So they go back in the ring. Which you have to win, I guess, in the ring. I don't know. You can't win outside. But anyway, Lola uses her belt to hit some clotheslines. And then uh, Jada hits a headbutt to cut off her momentum. Jada puts her on the ring steps and hits the teardrop. Which I think is that uh, that middle rope butt attack that she hit ooh, on the ladder a couple weeks ago. Mm. So back in the ring, Jada loads up the brick shot. She has another brick. Where did she get those bricks? Maybe from the local Home Depot. I don't know. But she loads up the brick, but gets kicked right in the head. And then Lola puts her in a uh, some type of chokehold. And Jada's in big time trouble, but somehow it gets broken up. And then Lola hits that spinning back fist of hers, I think with the same fucking hand that she hurt her. She hurt herself with. Knocks Jada out and pretty much said, well, she kind of knocked her out, but she chokes her out anyway. And Jada couldn't even answer the answer the, the referee. So, so Lola wins number three in NXT Underground. She wins the hat trick, wins the feud, 11-minute match, great match, three and a half out of five stars. And that's it. Now, where does Lola go? Maybe a world title shot. But most likely, I think she'd go after the... The uh, women's North American title that Fallon, don't call me, the Don Henley has. But we'll see. But that's what that. Alright, then we, after that, we go to A-Kid a- and Ben Frazier, the Power Rangers. Go, go, Power Rangers! Anyway, so A-Kid tells Ben Frazier, who's banged up, he's, his ribs are all taped up, his nose is all fucked up. He says, oh, we got this, don't worry, we got this. And they're going to be taking on Miles don't call him Ozzy Osbourne and Tavian Heights of Catchpoint 3.1. So we see how they got the title shot in the Tag Team Battle Royal. So we get to match number three. And I gotta say, this was pretty much the sleeper match of the night. Lots of near falls, lots of flippy nibbity news by A-Kid and Ben Frazier. And to give him credit, I hate to say but give him credit... Miles Bourne and Tavian Heights came this close to winning the tag team titles. And we get a Death Drowy Driver by Davian Heights for a near fall. Uh, Miles Bourne comes in, gets sent through the ropes, uh, and right on the Tavian Heights on the outside. Ben Frazier comes back in, hits a Springboard 450 for a near fall on Tavian Heights, and his ribs are still fucked up. And then there were some double team moves by Tavion and Miles. They hit a uh, nice little uh, TKO DDT combo on Axiom. I thought the, I thought I thought they were about to win the titles, and AK kicked out. The fans were like, "What? What? How did he fucking kick out of that?" Booker T's going completely berserk. Freaking freaking Vic Joseph's like, "How did he kick out of that?" I would have went, oh my god, he kicked out of that toe! My god almighty! My god almighty, he kicked out! How the hell did he do that? Tony Schiavone, my god almighty! This back is still going on, Tony! Where we get that? So, A-Kick is back up, hits a, kind of like he got tossed, and he hits a Canadian Destroyer, mm. and we call that a power driver, on Tavian Heights, and then a Fruit roll up on Miles Bourne went uh, retains the titles for Aiken and and uh and Ben Frazier. So they keep the belts. Pretty damn good match. 3.25 out of five stars in under 16 minutes. But damn, that was it was a good tag team match. But OTM was also also came out to kind of look on. They didn't really do much. So maybe we get Lucius Price and Bronco Nima, the next challengers for the tag titles, when that happens, maybe at New Year's Evil, I don't know. But that tag team division is just, no pun intended, stacked. So we'll see what happens with that. As we get there. Alright, then we go to the back. Javon Evans is pissed about losing. And then Wesley just comes up and then smacks him right in the face. Because he didn't take the match seriously. Well, Wesley's a small sport. And Javon, eh, 
Came that close, dude. But you'll get there. Just keep the keep fighting. Fight the good fight, Javon. Fight the good fight. We get that. All right, then we get a recap of Trick Willie defending the belt against Rich Holland. We saw what happened last week with Bitch Off and uh, Rich Holland hitting that package DDT on the announce table. Trick goes to the hospital. Then Ava Rain says, "Our match is still gonna happen." Trick Willie cuts a promo on I think I think it's um Twitter or his Instagram, basically saying. I don't care if I have a messed up neck. I'm going to whip your ass, basically. I'm going to whoop that trick. All right, so we get to match number four of five. For the NXT World title, Trick Witty. Shamo taking on Rich Holland. Pretty damn good match. Uh, they go to the floor, and Rich Holland hits that overhead belly to belly, which fucked Big E's neck up in pretty much his career. Though, we don't know if he's coming back yet. But when he does, all oh, the new day gonna be, oh boy, you don't gonna get fucked up. All right, so that gets blocked. Uh, Trick Willie sends him into the ring post, hits a slingshot, and sends Rich Holland throat first, ow, into the bottom rope. Then a running neck breaker gets a near fall on Ridge, but Ridge comes back, sends Trick Willie into the corner, and starts on working on that neck again, which got used right near the end. As, um, I think Trick Willie was trying to run at him right near the ropes. And Trick Willie kind of went into the ropes and then he moved his neck and his neck got caught in the ropes. I was like, damn! Trick Willie basically did a Mick Foley with, you know, when he went over the rope and his neck gets all like, ah, and he's all like choking to death. Right, Mick? You know that. Oh, I don't like that! Okay, calm down. Yeah, because you're a madman. Like your boy, you know, you know who? Terry. Terry! Cactus, what do you want? I just want to say hello. Cactus, what did I tell you about? What did I tell you about when I'm busy? Well, I'm sorry, Terry. I, I wanted to let you know in case I wanted to say hi. Cactus, eat your goddamn Doritos. Don't give me any. I'm not hungry right now. But they're very tasty. Cactus, I told you, leave me alone. Well, I'm sorry. Bye -bye. Okay, calm down, guys. I do a pretty damn good <laughs> Mick Foley impersonation. I just do. Terry Funk is hard to do, but... You know. Terry Funk's a hard impression to do, because, you know, how he talks. I was a hardcore legend in Japan. And then he starts getting serious. Tommy! You could have picked anybody to be your partner, but you picked Jake Roberts! You idiot! It's, hard to, it's a hard impression to do. Trust me. Not like the Macho Man or any savage. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. That's easy. Hulk Hogan. Brother. Get that. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, in the fourth quarter, 14 to 6. Saints. 13 minutes and change left. So, see if the Giants can somehow come, uh, somehow, uh, Get their defense starts waking up. Maybe get the ball back, go down the field, score a touchdown, and maybe get a two-point conversion. And see what happens at the tie the game. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But all right, let's go back to the Jets. Because that game's a little bit interesting. Was 20 to 15. But that Minnesota's beating the Falcons. That kind of helps the Niners out a little bit. 28 to 14. Jets are up 23 to 15 right now. In the I think it's going into the fourth quarter. So people are saying, oh the Jets are in the in the hunt for a playoff spot. Right. The nearest team is three, four games ahead of them. Which is the Broncos. You think they're gonna win all their games and the Broncos are gonna lose out? No. Jets ain't making the playoffs. They're done. They're about to get eliminated pretty soon. Probably in the next week or two. The Giants are already out. They've been out since week five. Fuck them. But it is what it is. Alright, so Trick Willie gets his fucking neck caught in the ropes. Dangerous spot. Crazy. And the referee's like, God, trying to get him out. But he eventually, the referee gets him out. And then um, Rich hits a redeemer, which I think is his finisher for a near fall. 
And then he goes for a charge into the ring post. And uh, pretty much had to push himself into the ring post. Dude. So Trick hits the trick, trick kick. Then the trick shot. Guess that's two moves in one. And he retains the belt in under 16 minutes. So he will face Oba, who, Femi, at New Year's Evil for the world title. Are we going to get a title shot? Probably. I think Oba's going to win the title. If not at, if he doesn't win at New Year's Evil, like, we might win it either, or oh, either, 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 or, well, he'll win either at Vengeance Day, or he wins at Stunned and Deliver. But Oba will be world champion by WrestleMania, I would assume, by around that time. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But Oba as world champ will be just amazing. He is going to be a big, huge star for WWE in the years to come. He's not, if he's not already. I mean, he is already, but... 200 and somewhat... Uh, what was it? 281? Somewhere around there? North American title reign? Dismantling <laughs> Adam Gold's reign? I'm not mad, but, you know... We get that. Alright, so Trick Wade versus Oba coming up January the 7th for the NXT Men's World Title. Alright, then we go to, I don't know where, I think we're in the parking lot somewhere. I don't know where we are, but Ethan Page talks about his recent losses as of late. He says, it's taken me 18 years to climb the mountain, become the NXT World Champ. And now, I have no idea how to get back to the top of the mountain. He's like, I can't do this anymore. And pretty much walks off. So I'm like, did he just quit? Did he just like legit quit? Or is this, I think it's a storyline, but... Who knows with Ethan Page. Who knows. But... And anybody notice there was three men walking in, or in, in that segment? I wonder, who those, who's those three men? Hmm. I thought it was Gallus at one point. I'm, think, I'm looking close. I'm like, mm, I don't know if that's Gallus or not. That's something to look at. So we'll see what happens with that. But Ethan Page possibly is gone for good. I think we'll see him next year. So maybe at the main. Maybe you're going to the main roster now. I don't know. But get that. All right. Then we go to the back. We have uh, Ava Rain announces Wesley versus Javon Evans this coming Tuesday night on the program back at the Performance Center. And then, and then the best part of the show. Tiffany Stratton, it's Tiffy time back in NXT. Daddy! Yes. I'm back in NXT! But it was only one time only. I don't care. It's me, it's Tiffy time. Okay, calm down. Anyway, Tiffany Stratton comes in and says, it talks about the women's Iron Survivor Challenge match, and the winner gets a title shot at Roxy at New Year's Evo. So Tiffany's like, hmm. Maybe I'll cash in my Money in the Bank briefcase on the on the champion. So imagine this: the winner of or Roxy beats whoever wins this Women's Iron Survivor Challenge match, and then she's beaten so severely that Tiffy Tiff comes in, wins the wins the NXT Women's World Title for a second time, and then holds it all the way to probably we could probably see. Tiffy Tiff go to WrestleMania with the NXT World Title. And please, for the love of God, I know there's supposed to be some type of thing with Charlotte and Tiffy Tiff. God, if and if she wins the NXT title again, especially from Tiffy Tiff at WrestleMania, that doesn't count as 17 titles, by the way, or 16. Doesn't count. I know it will count, but technically it won't, but... They'll say, oh, 16 titles for the for Charlotte Flair. Which well, is about to hit 15, I think. But whatever. Whatever it may be. I really don't want any Charlotte Flair in NXT as a champion again. Remember when she beat Rhea Rip? I think she beat Rhea for the title and then she lost to EO. That was fun. That was fun when EO won the title from Rhea Ripley. I think it was Rhea Ripley and Charlotte in that triple threat match 
uh, during the pandemic era, that in your house, which they don't do anymore. That was fun. That was EO's first reign as champ. I remember that well. I marked the fuck out when EO won. The first time and the second time. And then she, when she won the uh, SmackDown belt from, uh, I think it was a SmackDown belt from, uh, from Bianca, when Oscar lost to Bianca, and then and EO won Money in the Bank, which I was happy about, and then she cashed in on Bianca right at SummerSlam, after Charlotte and Oscar basically whipped her ass, and then Bianca won the title because she used her super of strength, and then EO comes out of nowhere and says, Hey, me what title! Gets the title, and then, um, well, sadly she lost it. I think she, I think she, who she lose it to? I think she lost it to Rhea, right? I think she lost it to, I think she lost it to Rhea. I forget who she lost it to, but, but in any case, Tiffy Tiff could be the NXT Women's World Champion going up to WrestleMania, and then, God forbid, we don't know who wins the Royal Rumble. I hope it's Asuka, but it's most likely going to be Charlotte Horseface, Charlotte Flair. Yeah. And then we're going to get Bian uh, Bianca. So we're going to get Rhea Ripley and Liv. The final, final match. Whether it be Hell in a Cell. I don't know how they're going to end this fucking feud. It should end now. But Rhea's probably going to get the belt back for the, I don't know, third, fourth, fifth time. And then we'll see Rhea Ripley versus, I don't know, maybe Becky. That'd be nice. Because Becky will be coming back at the Rumble. Or, well... The uh, Netflix premiere. Probably be in the Royal Rumble. Not win it. Because she already won it. Why, why would you win it again? Everybody wants Bianca to win it again. <laughs> I hope not. I think it's going to be Charlotte Flair. I have a feeling. I mean, who else could it be besides... Maybe Oscar's coming back. Maybe get some some uh, surprise entrant. <coughs> Excuse me. Surprise entrant in the uh, Royal Rumble from NXT. Whoever that could probably be. Maybe Roxy. Maybe Corey Jade. Mm, not someone likes that, but... I don't know. I know Alexa Bliss might be coming back for the Royal Rumble. Possibly. It's a possibility, but... Alexa Bliss winning the Royal Rumble. Hmm. I mean, we'll see. And then we got the... Uh, we're probably going to have a women's uh, Elimination Chamber match. I don't even know who will win that. If Charlotte doesn't win at the Royal Rumble, she'll probably win the Elimination Chamber. Not that I want her in that match, but... I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Alright, so next, uh, this Tuesday night on the program, Wesley and Javon Evans. And then, uh, I think we got a tag team match as well on, on the CW11 Tuesday night. So we'll see what happens with that. Then, your main event, ladies and gentlemen, for the women's... Uh, Iron Survivor challenged the more contender spot to see who faces Roxy for her title at New Year's Evil. So we had my girl Julia at number one and <laughs> going against uh, my other girl, Maddie Winkowski, who comes in at number two. And boy, did she put on a very good performance early on in most of the match. She didn't win a, get a pinfall, but she took a beating and keep, kept on ticking. So, Julia and, and Maddie Winkowski start off. The rest of the surfer girl, Soul Luca, comes in at number three. Um, and uh, Julia got the first pin in under ten minutes with the Northern Lights bomb. So, she has the first pin to go up one, one pin, uh, one point. And then Soul Luca hits the Soul Snatcher right on Maddie as she came out of the penalty box. That's, that's just, wow. You, you go in the penalty box, you wait a minute and a half, you come back out, you roll in the ring, and next thing you know, boom, soul snatcher, back in the penalty box you go. That's just, that's sad. Sad for Maddie, I'm sorry. Alright, so, so Soul Ruka gets, gets a, a, a one point, and then Delta comes in, uh, right after that, so it's basically a three-on-one. Maddie comes eventually comes out of the fucking penalty box. And then uh, Stephanie Vercourt comes out at number four. Jumps on the back of Delta, who sends her and um, Julia, I believe, into the corner. 
So this will be double cannonball. And then she picks up Julia, hits the F5. One, two, three. So Julia goes into the penalty box. Delta has one pin. Goes one pin for Julia, one pin for Soul, one pin for, for uh, Delta. With uh, about six minutes left. And then... So everybody's in the in the, the ring, and we get near to about a minute and a half left in the in the match, and uh, Stephanie Vercuro rolls up Maddie again, so she gets a pin. So everybody has one point except for Maddie, and not a great time to go in the penalty box there, Maddie. One and about a minute and a half left, so everybody's fighting for that for that final pin. And then, as soon as Maddie comes out of the penalty box, with about 30 seconds left, she gets she gets a shocking pinfall off a sunset flip on Sol Ruka. Oh, that had to hurt for her. So, it's tied at one with 33 seconds left. So, Sol Ruka, you're done for the match. Bye, you can't come out. So, you have to stay in the penalty box. She's out of the match. So, the final four, Julia, Sol, uh, excuse me, Julia, Delta, Stephanie Vicker, and Maddie... Fight it out in the, in the next 33 seconds to see who will become the number one contender. And with 13 seconds left, so basically in 20 seconds, Delta hits a double spear. I think it was on Maddie and Stephanie Vercour. And then, and then uh, Julia, out of nowhere, hits the Kogayame, that knee strike. Right on Delta, and she pins her to win the match. I thought Delta was winning this match. It felt better and made more sense to have Delta go against Roxy. And Delta would automatically probably win that match anyway. But Julia wins the match. She's the Iron Survivor. And she gets a basically a rematch from a couple of months ago. Where Roxy somehow pinned her. Don't get me started with that one. Uh, but Julia will get her revenge, and she will face Roxy for the NXT World Title at New Year's Eve, January the 7th. I hope and pray they pull the trigger with Julia, make it the NXT Women's Champion. Then we're going to have fun. Julia can face off against Stephanie, because they had a little bit of a... Er, in, during the match, we saw like, Julia and Stephanie like headbutt the crap out of each other. That was fun. The crowd was like, ah! Marking out and everything. I'm like, oh, here we go, Santa deliver. I think we're going to see Julia versus Stephanie Vercour at stand and deliver for the NXT world title, women's world title. That was great. Uh, Stephanie tried to, to, to get a pin at the 25-minute mark, but her roll-up got two on Julia as she kicked out barely right at the buzzer. Mm. So, I'm thinking... I think if Julia wins the belt from Roxy, maybe a rematch at Vengeance Day, and then somehow Stephanie Vercour gets the title shot uh, as we go to uh, Stand and Deliver in April during WrestleMania weekend on April the, I think it's the 19th or the 18th or whatever date it is. But that's going to be in the daytime, as we all know, night one, the same time, the same date as NXT Stand and Deliver. At like 12, 1 o'clock. Well, actually, it won't be at 12. What time will it be on, actually? Shit. Uh, I think it's going to start... Was this in Vegas? So, it's probably going to start, I would assume... About 2 o'clock, 2, 3 o'clock here in the, in the East Coast. So, that means... Uh, well, West Virginia is probably going to start at 6 in East Coast time. Two, uh, that's 3 o'clock. You know, I don't know how that's going to work out. Because they can't do it like, what are they gonna do it at 10 o'clock Pacific time? That's like 1 o'clock here in the, in the state. It could do that. I think they might do that. 10 o'clock, it probably will start 10 o'clock Pacific time, 1 o'clock here in the east, and then 6 o'clock will be WrestleMania night one. So that's 3 o'clock Pacific time or mountain time. Well, probably, I think it's Pacific time. I don't know how that mountain time, Pacific time works. So I think I think it's if you're in Vegas, you're in Mountain Time, which makes no sense. Because Vegas is like right near California, which is Pacific Time. Whatever.
whatever time it is, it's going to be like 1, 2 o'clock here in the, in the East Coast. And then WrestleMania will be 6 o'clock in the East Coast, 3 o'clock on the West Coast. But it's going to be a fun time for all those, everybody who's going to Vegas. I wish I was going, but that's a lot of money. <laughs> and they got to save up like two years worth of, at least two years worth of uh, salary. Unless, you know. It's a lot, because you got to get the tickets, you got to pay for at least a week worth of, uh, at least a week's worth of, of time at the hotel, food, and if you go to like GCW or any of the indie shows, the Hall of, uh, not, uh, yeah, the Hall of Fame, if you go to SmackDown the night before that, that's a lot of money. Too rich for my blood. But, I mean, if it's in New York, definitely going. I would definitely go, because, uh, well, not so much, I went to WrestleMania uh, 20, when it was cheaper, but, you know, 29, I didn't go to, 35, I could have went to, but, didn't have, I think it was working around that time, anyway, it was working somewhere, I forgot what I was working at, but, anyway, I could have went to 35, which was the, well, forget it, WrestleMania, 8 hour WrestleMania, I'm not gonna stay there for 8 hours, fuck that shit, I felt bad for people who went to that, by bus, they didn't have, you know, they couldn't get an Uber, or they couldn't get a cab to go to the Metal Land, the MetLife Stadium, and they had to go use New Jersey Transit bus or train, and the trains, oh, that pay-per-view ended like after 12, 1 o'clock, mm. there's no trains that go out of, out of Secaucus at 1 o'clock in the morning, you're stuck, a lot of people were stuck, they didn't know what to do, how are you going to get home? Yo, you're stuck in Seacall because you have to stay in a hotel somewhere. Or call a cab somehow and pay like 60 to to $100 just to get home. That was stupid. And there's no buses going after 12, I think. I don't know how to, I don't know, but... There was a lot of people got stuck at rest, around WrestleMania 35 time. It was just insane. Insane. So, if you're going by bus... I think at some, for SummerSlam next year, I hope, you better hope and pray it ends around 11 o'clock. I think it will because I think uh, WWE is going to comp compensate time for people that took, took uh, the New Jersey Transit train and they took the New Jersey Transit bus that goes right to the Meadowlands. So, so you better get out early. As soon as the main event of night one and two ends... Get the fuck out of the stadium, run for the bus and the train, and hopefully you'll get home on time. Because if not, you're stuck. But now we got Uber and Lyft, and uh, good luck getting a cab to get into the fucking stadium. Good luck with that. So you know there's going to be a lot of people taking Ubers from the Meadowlands to get back to Manhattan or Queens or wherever. Now basically Manhattan, because people will be coming... Coming from the train and who knows. But it is what it is. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I gotta get out of here. Thanks for watching because the Niners are coming up in about a half hour from now, so I gotta get ready for that. Jets and the Dolphins tied at 23 with nine minutes to go. So it's squeaky bum time for that game. Tampa Bay 21 to 10, so they're about to take the the uh they're going to be, uh, well, they're tied for the division, but Atlanta holds the wall, uh, the tiebreaker. But right now, they're losing to the fight queers. So, Tampa Bay's winning. So, if all holds up, then Tampa Bay will be in first place in the NFC South. And Atlanta will be one of the wild cards. Right now, uh, Miami's in the hunt at 5-7. and seven, But they got a lot of work to do. Let's see what happens with that. Minnesota's up 35-21. So, looks like looks like the fight queers will still be around that um, NFC North title area about a, about a game or so back. The Packers, you know, still around that around there too. Now we'll see. There's a lot, lots of things going on in the next four weeks of the NFL in the league where they play for pay. All right, so let's go to the Giants. I'm probably getting destroyed. Yeah, it's just about under six minutes to play, but five fifty six left, third and eighteen. For the G-Men, down 11. Yeah, I don't think they're winning this game. 
There is no well at midfield. If they can if they can try if they can score and you know get and then hopefully get the ball back. I would say about a, with about a minute and change left, they still have three timeouts. But it's third and eighteen. Basically got nothing on that play. So definitely going for it on fourth down. Yeah. I, I don't see I really don't and it's five forty one left. Giants need a touchdown and and a uh, two point conversion to make it a three three point game and then they have to play some defense. I know the Saints are just gonna run the ball because they really don't give crap a crap. And then and the Saints are going nowhere. They're four and eight right now. They win at five and eight. They're still kinda in the hunt, but they gotta hope and pray with that NFC South, which is at six and six. So they're really really that they're uh, Two games out. But still, I think there'll still be two games out because Tampa Bay is now the leader. So, first down for the Giants. Uh, good for them. But still got a lot of work to do with under five to play. So, I don't think the Giants are winning this game. There's no, It's the Giants. So, but they're in the red zone right now. They're at the uh, 23-yard line with just about four and a half to play. Got to get a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And, oh, well. They're at the one-yard line. They're at the one. This could get interesting. Giant fans, you, oh, no, you're right there. With about four minutes left. So, yeah. Let's see. All right, they're at the one. See if they can sneak in. And they do. Well, I think it was a false start. Nope, timeout by the Saints. Oh, that's had a suck. That had a suck. Because they, uh, they scored a touchdown with a quarterback sneak. And the, those stupid idiot Saints called a timeout. Oh, that's got to hurt. But. So we could see the Giants scoring here. Making it 14 to possibly 14 to 10. If, if, if they don't get the two-point conversion, this game is pretty much over. Pretty much. And I think they might go for that unsafe pick. Or they kick it off. Hope the defense stops them. They get it back. Go down the field for a game-winning touchdown. But, I mean, we'll see what happens with that. So, you know, a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people right now, they're saying, oh, Giants are dead. Well, I don't know. Right now, they're, at, they're knocking on the door to possibly... Making this a three-point game with four minutes left. And they got a good chance to possibly get the ball back with about maybe a minute or two left. Go down the field for a possibly, they possibly could tie the game, go to overtime. Or, or possibly get a touchdown to win the game. And they need, they're at the one, they couldn't even get the ball in. Wow. That's how bad the Giants are. They can't even score like the, like the Niners in the red zone. Can't fucking score, even with Christian McCaffrey there. But now he's not there. He's out for the season. Now what's going on? Stupid. The, the clock stopped, and everybody's looking at the referee. What happened? Are they looking at that to see if he, he got in? Oh, they called it a touchdown. Okay. Why'd you stop then? That made no sense. Alright, so the Giants scored. The crowd's like, Yay, yeah, Giants scored! <clears throat> Who gives a shit? Did he get in? Let's see. Oh, you can't tell from that. Uh, maybe they broke the plane somehow. You can't tell because there was like so many people bunched up together. So I don't know how they saw that on replay. Well, they gave him a touchdown. Giants are going for two. They got four eleven left. So even if they don't get it, it's a five point game. And they, if they can get the ball back, try to go down field, win the game possibly. But we'll see if the Giants can get the two point conversion. And uh, oh wow, the ball was tipped at the goal line, and a fight for the ball. And Malik, Malik Neighbors, who caught the ball at the one-yard line, caught the ball 
The Giants get the two-point conversion. They are down by three. Ah! For those of you who picked the Saints to win by spread, you got fucked right now. Fuck! Oh, that hurts. That hurts some pick'em leaves. That really fucking hurts. Fuck it every time. The Giants, man. You want them to lose... They want them to lose big, you sometimes win. You get that win. But then sometimes you pick the Giants to lose, they win. Or they'll win, but not by spread. It is so hard. So hard to win fantasy pick em leagues. So fucking hard. And I'm doing I've been doing it for five years. Maybe I should stop and go to regular fan regular fi uh, fantasy football. Which is hard enough to win too. I played it once, I came in second place, so I lost the Super Bowl. Because I put the wrong fucking tight end in, I think it was. I think it was a tight end or a wide receiver. I forgot who it was even then. Oh, I came that close to getting, getting a stupid trophy. It wasn't even a real trophy, it was just a gold, me gold medal trophy. But I got a silver medal, and then a year after that, I got a bronze. Which isn't bad being third place, being second place, but... You know. That close to winning fun, uh, fantasy football. That close a few years ago. Many years ago. Oh, yo, 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 fuck. Alright, guys. I gotta get out of here. Gotta watch the Niners coming up in a, in a little bit. I think I gotta have my sister lunch. I gotta do other things. Other things on my happy Sunday. Hopefully a happy Sunday for you, my, my Niners. And, um, that's that. Alright, I gotta get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, so, final... So my final rating for <clears throat> NXT Deadline, pretty damn good show. I gave it 7.25 out of 10 stars. Let me know what you guys thought of the show down below in the comment section. Please subscribe to the channel and my other channels as well. Smash that like button to death and all that other good shit. Alright guys. All right, so thanks for watching. I'll be back later with your AEW Collision review. Good show there as well. Maybe TNA Ring of Honor after that. We'll see about that. But get you ready for another exciting week of wrestling in the second week of December as we're rolling on. Two weeks remaining till Christmas. Three weeks away from the end of the year. So we're rolling on through December. We got Final Battle coming up next Friday night. We got Collision at the Hammerstein. At Final Battle at the Hammerstein. Collision on the 21st. I don't know if that's going to be a live show. I hope it is. That'd be fun. And I will be there for Final Battle and Collision. And I'm not going to tell you, show you proof. So you can go fuck yourselves. So we got that. Uh, Dynamite on 34th Street being taped on the 22nd. We'll see that on Christmas night. NXT will be taped the 24th. <laughs> we know that what that is. Uh, so we got that, uh, and then the final Rampage of the year will be taped as well, I believe, either on the 21st or the, uh, I think on the 22nd, and that's gonna be the final Rampage of the year, New Year's Smash, for Rampage on the 27th, and that's the night before Worlds End, the final pay-per-view of the year for everything, and then we got Monday Night Raw on the 30th, NXT, New Year's Show, which is a tape show, but it's the week before uh, it's the go home show before New Year's Evil. So, I don't know if that's gonna be a live show, it's gonna be taped, probably be taped. But we got that to win out the year, and then we turn over the, the calendar year to 2025. And what do we start with? New Japan Pro Wrestling Wrestle Kingdom 19. Oh, there's some interesting stuff I saw on the New Japan Twitter page. Oh, Hiromo Takahashi turns on Naito and gets with Narita? What? Of all people, Hiromo Takahashi has been in Los Ingolabales de Japón since pretty much the, almost the inception. He turns on Naito? What? Little Hiromo Takahashi? Wow, I was, I was shocked to see that. Hiromu, say it ain't so, bro! Wow, I, I couldn't believe my eyes seeing that. 
I never thought in a million years we see the time. Well, he used to be a heel back in New Japan. We remember that when he first held the the junior heavyweight title a couple of times. He was a heel. Now he's he was he was a face. Now he's back to heel again. But man, he he turned on Naito. What? Man, Wrestle Kingdom was gonna be good. And Wrestle Dynasty the next night with the box. Uh, taking on um, who they, they were supposed to take on the great, uh, the great Okan and Hanari. I think Hanari got hurt, so they had to vacate those IWGP tag team belts, and now it's they've been vacated. So the Bucks are taking on um, I forget who they're taking on. Shit, I forget who they're taking on, but it's gonna be for the vacant IWGP. World Tag Team title. Can you say the Bucks might win that again? I don't know. I think they might not. Because, I mean, it'll make no sense for them to win it. And they're, they're supposedly going to be coming back to save AEW. But then again, they could win it. Maybe lose it at New Year's Dash. Which is, I think, the night after that. Or at the end of January. Or they go to February. I think that if they do win it, they'll probably lose it right before... Revolution, because I think they're coming back around that time to save AEW from Moxley's Reign of Terror and the Death Riders' Reign of Terror. Depends who wins the title. <laughs> By then, I don't know if Moxley retains at World's End. I don't think he, he may or may not, because he's fighting the Hangman Adam Page, Jay White, and, o and Orange Cassidy. Well, you get to Orange Cassidy being the champion out the window. Well, if he does, I think Chris Kidd's going to cash in. So I think Chris Kidd might be champ by the time we hit 2025. I said that since he won that, uh, that, uh, that freaking contract. I think Chris Kidd will be champ by the beginning of next year. I was thinking he would be, he'd be a guy like, hi guys, Darby here. But, you know, it's not going to be Darby. Darby might... I don't even think Darby's going to win the freaking Continental Breakfast of Champions title. I still think it's going to be Ricochet. And how did Fletcher beat Okada last night? I mean, it doesn't really hurt Okada, but man. If Kyle Fletcher, in the span of two, two weeks, he beat Ocean Spray at full gear. And he got a big, huge win against Okada last night. A collision. And he has nine points in the Blue League. And he's got two matches left. And who are they against? Daniel Garcia. And I think he, I think he's, um, I think he's facing Mark Briscoe. He should win that match. I don't think he's going to beat Garcia. I think he's going to end up with 12 points. So I think he, we will see him as either the, the, the leader or he comes in second place. Because I think, I think it's going to be between Okada, Garcia, and maybe Shelton Benjamin. To win that Gold League. Uh, the Blue League, I'm sorry. Gold League, I think it's going to be Ocean Spray. I mean, so bottled up with Claudio, Brody King, and Ocean Spray. I think Ocean Spray is going to be one of those, at least in the semis, definitely. Against Ricochet, probably. I would love to see that. And then, who knows? I think we might get a rematch with Kyle Fletcher and Ocean Spray to see if he becomes the Continental Breakfast or champ, uh, Breakfast Champion. Because it ain't going to be Okada. Okada loses the belt anyway, which I think is... Well, I don't even know. If K Okada gets in the semis and he goes to the finals and wins, does he retain the title? That makes no sense. Because they're saying, oh, if he gets in, he loses the belt anyway. It makes no sense. He's in the finals. He's basically defending the title. What if he wins? Makes those AEW's fucking retarded sometimes with these fucking rules. Well, I'm just nuts. I don't know. But that's, that's another story for another time. But in any case. Alright, I gotta get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time. Peace.